Stephen. I wanted to welcome you to the World Egg and Sperm Bank. It's such a pleasure to have you here because I really want you to see the amazing professional job your staff did in our lab. We're really, really happy with that. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's uh, wonderful to be in a place where gold standard meets gold standard. So I'm very excited about what we're gonna be discussing today and what we'll see. So Klaus, in your own words, how would you explain the differences that you have in the way you do things here at a World Egg and Sperm Bank? So I guess, first of all, it's the kind of the unique structure that we have is that we have a single facility. So what that allows us to do is to maintain and do all of the processes really within our clinic. We're not relying on a lot of other centers to do all of our follicular stimulations or make sure that our patients are done correctly. We are basically able to take that patient from the very beginning, from onboarding the patient all the way to freezing her oocytes and ensuring that they're in the bank correctly. What this does is this removes a lot of variability because when we first started, we were using some outside facilities. And we right away, we initially could tell that oocytes that came from uh, Clinic X were different from Clinic Y. When we brought everything in house, managing the donors, how everything happens, and then the true thing where kind of the secret sauce is all made and all this is in the laboratory because really what you need to do is you have to have high levels of consistency. Your client clinics that are purchasing these oocytes they've come to rely on that consistency. They know that the quality of the egg that we get is gonna be the same. So the reason why our process is so different for our donors is because we follow worldwide regulations. So some of the strictest countries, such as Australia and the UK, have much different processes for the donors. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we screen all of our donors to those standards, mm -hmm. from your traditional infectious disease testing, mm -hmm. psychological screening, genetic testing, genetic counseling, and some additional labs such as blood typing, HTLV 1 and 2 and things as such. When our donors actually go through the process, every single donor, egg and sperm, come here to our facility in Scottsdale, Arizona. We do that because we want every donor to feel at home. Mm -hmm. When they come and walk through the door, we want them to feel like they're going to a place that they trust the people, they know what's going to happen. and they feel secure. They're not going to be sitting in a waiting room with patients. They're going to be sitting in a waiting room with another potential donor that they share that shared interest. When a donor is going through a cycle here with us or collecting as a sperm donor, we want to make sure they're treated as family. It starts with my own experience as a person who went through 15 years of IVF as an intended parent. And then I located my own donor. This was at the very beginning of the whole IVF industry. So I went through that experience and I saw this world from a patient's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I also have since seen it from the eyes of a child born from egg donation. I really brought that experience into how I would form this business to work for patients because I saw it was very medical focused but not patient focused. Mm -hmm. We needed to really hone in on controlling quality in order to give couples the best chance of having a child. When I started the first egg bank in uh, 2004, we used a slow freeze process and we went to fast freeze process, but I knew that we had to actually do everything under one roof in one location so that we had the same staff doing repetitive behaviors that they were familiar with. We could develop new technologies based on analyzing our own data mm -hmm. and we could control quality. We can control the safety for the donors. Yeah. And as a result, we could control better outcomes for patients. So Ariel, we're sitting in this absolutely fantastic state-of-the-art facility here. Can you talk me through this a little bit? We have definitely upgraded where we've been before. Um, we're continually moving forward just to make sure that we're ahead of the game. We've added some some pretty cool new technology in here and it's it's really driven us to get some better outcomes for our recipients. And with the development of new technologies, are there any changes you, you think you'll be implementing in the facility? Absolutely. I'm a big advocate of AI. To my knowledge, we're the only egg bank around that's now incorporated artificial intelligence. And the reason for that is when we're looking at oocytes, the human eye is really not very good at judging. <laughs> is this egg good? Is this egg bad? What AI is going to allow us to do is to objectively look at like the effects of the donor themselves mm -hmm. and then also the follicular stimulation that went into collecting these eggs. And then AI gives us a very objective score. Mm -hmm. 
Then what our client clinics do is they thaw these eggs, then they provide us feedback back. And what we'll do is we'll put all this data in, we'll look at the you know, algorithms that come out of all this, and we'll be able to correlate you know, using AI as the bridge to see what the effects of the donor were and then how that consequently mm -hmm. affects in, in the development of these embryos in the laboratory. So it's gonna really objectify everything. In my opinion, it's gonna be a real game changer. So Klaus, obviously a very important question. How did you choose for the World Egg and Sperm Bank you chose Ziltex? We had looked at so many vendors and what we really wanted is to have a relationship with somebody. We wanted them to be part of the team, to understand fully and completely what we did. At the same time, we wanted to work with a system that was specifically designed for life sciences. We needed to make sure that if and when alarms did go off, that you know the safety limits were taken care of, that we had monitoring 24-7. And then the another aspect that was really important was to make sure that the onboarding of the team was really well and that everything was really able to go exactly the way we needed to. So really checked all the boxes from the quality of the equipment, the training of the equipment, the robustness and how these pros were, and, and the whole system was made specifically for life sciences. So it fit our needs really, really well. We're really excited about it. It's just been an awesome partnership thus far. We look forward to the next phase and continuing to get better and better. So visiting uh, the World Egg and Sperm Bank has been an absolutely phenomenal experience. I think it really showcases that the gold standard and the quality, and I, I have to be honest, the care they give to all their donors is exceptional. Uh, it's not just the technical side of things that is set up to the highest level, it's very much the care of the people, uh, the humanity of it, the good work that they do. And I'm just sitting here as the president of Ziltrix, proud, humbled, that we can be a small part uh, of that journey of, of all the, the people that come through here that get treated so well that my contribution is small but hopefully significant. It's very much a team here uh, itself of all the people and that's why I think we're such a good successful combination. There's a lot of good lessons to be learned and I'm just very grateful to be sitting in this wonderful facility and uh, speaking to you.